And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Jacob King, who during his near-death experience encountered God, who taught him some valuable things about who we are, who God is, and how to experience love. Jacob, thank you for joining me today and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Jacob, can we start on the day that you had your experience and go from there? Yeah, sure. Um, so the day I had my experience, I was uh, in a pretty miserable state. I was uh, dealing with the regular symptoms of PTSD and um, I was dealing with you know, drug addiction and basically giving up hope on ever healing and recovering from the things I'd experienced in my childhood and uh, things that really ruined me as an adult. So, you know, here I am just taking drugs as I usually would and just trying to escape reality. And uh, things went very differently than they usually would. Um, when I took these drugs, which I'd taken plenty of times before, I found myself passing out and leaving my body. And before I knew it, I was in some, I was in a black void and everything was very dark. and strange i didn't feel scared or anything i just i was like all right what's going on here usually when you pass out you don't remember anything until you wake up the next day um but i was very conscious the whole time and i started to feel this very warm very loving very soothing energy entering into this void with me and i sort of welcomed it and as i welcomed it I felt like this energy started to embrace me and surround me. And it was such a beautiful energy. I, uh, I felt very complete and very much restored by this energy that was embracing me. And I remember it was like, I felt like, uh, I didn't need anything else in my life. Like I, I'd spent so much, so many years chasing things, drugs, women, whatever. And now I didn't need anything anymore. I was good. If I just had this energy in my life, I didn't need another thing in, ever again. And I remember as I was just having this experience, feeling like this energy is familiar. I, I know this energy from somewhere and I'm trying to think. And I scanned through my whole life in about one second and I couldn't find this energy. And I was like, so why is this energy familiar? But then I was able to scan back further. And then I remembered, I was like, oh, I spent time with this energy before I was born. Oh, this is God. Oh, this is God's energy. And then I realized, wait, God is hugging me right now. God is holding me. And it was amazing, you know. And as I was in that place and had that realization, I became aware of just how powerful this energy was. And it was more powerful than all the power on earth combined. It was like all the power of all the universes combined was within this entity, was within this being. And there was a moment there, it was like a fork in the road where I could have either chosen to be afraid of this power or I could have chosen to fall into its love. And honestly, it was like 50, 50. I was like, you choose. But I feel like if I, if I had chosen to be afraid of its power, things that would have gone south really bad. And then, but I chose to just fall into its love and just be at peace with that. And when I chose that, I was taken out of this void and I was in a new dimension. It just took me out. And this other dimension was like space, you know, with all, like all the, all the stars and everything. But the stars were very alive and very conscious. And there was light coming out of these stars. And the lights were changing color. And I was seeing colors that I'd never seen on Earth before. And it was very very moving uh it was 
it was too beautiful for me to really handle and to to keep it together i i couldn't just observe it like you see a beautiful art piece on earth and you go oh wow yeah cool you know this was like major jaw drop it, it was like there was so much awe within me i was so astonished at what i was seeing that i felt like it was getting dangerous you know i still felt like i was in a human body over here and i felt like my heart rate was increasing and uh, it was too much like it was getting dangerous with how beautiful it is what i was seeing and not only that there was so much love in this place uh, the sheer amount of love i felt like it was going to cause me to disintegrate you know uh, and that's not to say that the experience wasn't beautiful it was incredibly beautiful but it was just almost more beautiful than what I could handle, you know? And uh, I realized that all these lights, these stars that I was seeing, they were, as they were conscious, I realized these were souls. And as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing God was, he was just like an invisible ball of energy, but he may as well have been visible because the energy coming off him is so strong. You you know exactly where where God is. Um, I refer to God as a he, but God transcends gender. God is not a he or a she, but I just can't call God it because it just doesn't sound right. Um, so I call God he, but that's just from for me. Uh, what I saw God do was he started to gather these lights, these souls together, and he was sort of creating these beautiful works of art with them and the art was was so astonishing i felt like as i said before i felt like it was so beautiful it could kill me and i was just looking back and i was so amazed at what i was seeing and i could feel god almost like with a sense of humor almost chuckle like he was enjoying putting on this show for me and he was like you don't need to do anything. You just relax. You just watch. I'm putting on a show for you. You enjoy it. You know, <laughs> it's so beautiful and very different to the religious God I was taught about growing up, who would have sent me to hell for sure. You know, um, no, nah, he was cool. He was, he was a cool dude. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he he started taking me through this dimension. We started flying together through all these stars and as I was flying through it felt like flying but it also felt like swimming underwater at the same time it was both of those sensations combined but instead of water the water or what felt like what felt like love like I was there was a physical feeling to the love as I was flying through it and as I'm flying through it I'm absorbing the love and I'm also absorbing all the the beauty of all the stars that I'm seeing and I'm just flying through and I'm taking it all in and me and God were just flying together and we started going faster and faster and faster and faster and it was getting to be too much and I was like oh getting too much God's getting too much and then we stopped and we stopped at this giant tower now it was like the same sort of tower you would see on earth but it was made out of the same kind of light. So it looked different, but just structurally, it was the same sort of shape. And we're right in front of this tower, and I'm looking up, and I can't see the top of this tower because of how high it is. I can just see how awesome the lights are on this thing. And I'm taking a breather, and then God's like, all right, we're going to the top of this tower. All right. So we start flying up. And we're flying up to the top of this tower and same thing again the speed is increasing and increasing and i'm absorbing all the love and i'm getting to my breaking point again and it's really terrifying when you get to the breaking point because you feel like you're gonna die even though you're in this other dimension where death shouldn't exist to me i st i still feel like i'm in a human body and i feel like this human body is just gonna fall apart at what it's experiencing and so getting towards the top and I'm like god I think I'm gonna die I think it's getting too much getting too much too much and just as I think I'm about to break we stop and we're at the top of this tower and I'm like oh that was close 
That was really close. Okay, I'm glad I'm still alive. And we're at the top of this tower, and I walk to the edge of it, and I look out. And as I look out, I can see billions and trillions of these stars. They're just everywhere. And they're so beautiful. And I'm just looking, and I'm like, oh, like, this is an amazing view. Like, just, just looking out at it all and catching my breath. And then God sort of vibrationally, telepathically, tells me now we progress through this and i was like okay like i nearly died coming up this tower i have to progress and fly through all of that i'm dead for sure for sure i'm dead there's no way i'm going to survive that and god said yes i was like i am gonna die if i go through that and you want me to go through that and die I, and I thought about it for a moment and i thought well god is so powerful and he's so wise and he's so loving and he's so calm like perfect equanimity and he says yes and i was like all right well who am i to argue okay let's do it i trust you and then I just got ready and God, he just picked me up like I was a paper airplane and he just threw me and I just started flying and sailing through. And at first it was easy and it was nice. And then, then I could just absorb all the, the beauty of everything and the love. And then it started getting a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. And then I got to that same point again of feeling like I was going to break, but now I knew to trust God and to get past that breaking point. And as I got past that breaking point, I started to feel the skin on my face start to pull off, but it felt really nice. It felt like taking off a tight shoe and the skin came off and then the bones came off and the muscles and all these human layers of identification that had remained with me in this place all started to dissolve one layer after another and each layer that came off just felt like taking off another tight shoe and all these layers that i had with me contained within them all the trauma that i had experienced growing up the trauma that had caused me to be very suicidal as an adult and a drug addict and you know hopelessly dysfunctional because of severe symptoms these were all just coming off me and so one layer after another is coming off and I'm going so fast. I feel like I'm moving at the speed of light and I'm feeling so good. And all the layers are coming off until I get to this final layer. And then I, that's when I got a little worried and I thought, all right, once this layer is dissolved, then, then I'm really dead because nothing's left after that. And I'm flying and I'm flying and this layer doesn't dissolve. I thought, what's going on here? This layer won't dissolve. It's completely unaffected by what I'm experiencing right now. And then God stopped me from flying and he, he picked me up. And I was just like a little, almost like a little grain of sand in his hand, you know. And he showed me what he was seeing from his point of view. And from his point of view, he was looking at a little white light. And this little white light was like the, the light of my soul. And he said, no matter what you've been through, everything you will go through, everything you experience will fade away. This, this is real. This is eternal. This is who you really are. Remember this. And then he rolled me out of his hand, like as if rolling a little ball, you know, just rolled it out of his hand and I joined with all the other lights and we became one. It was like a drop of water joining the ocean. It just became one. And there was no ego and there was no sense of me being a human. I'd completely forgotten that I even was a human. I'd forgotten all about earth. I was just one with these ocean of lights and we were like one unified being and time ceased to exist. And I experienced 
peaceful bliss, peaceful ecstasy and eternity in this place. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. And I was there for however long I was. And then God picked me up and separated me from that ocean. And next to me appeared almost like an image or just materialized of my human body, this body I'm in right now, back on earth, passed out, looking like it's dead, whatever it was. And he said, you have to go back to that now. And I was like, oh. And I started to remember earth and what it was like to be a human and this life that I'm living and everything. And I was like, wait, I've got to ask you some questions. And he said, okay. And I said, how can I go from being here, being this, and then going back to being that, that guy is so depressed and suicidal, a drug addict, he hates his life. It's so different. The contrast of earth and the contrast of this place, it's, I don't understand how I can possibly go back to that. And he just said, it's okay. And embedded within the vibration of what he said, when he said, it's okay, what I understood at that time was, I don't judge you for what you've been through, for what you've turned into. I don't judge you for any of that. I accept you as you are, and you have nothing to fear. It's okay. And I said, all right, but how can all of this exist, all this love and all this beauty and this place I'm in, how could all of that exist? And I didn't know about it. I mean, I, I'd heard about heaven and all this, but experiencing it is different. It's very different how like i'm gonna want to when i get back i want to tell everyone about this place but they're not going to believe me can you can you maybe give them this love that i'm experiencing and i mentioned some names you know my cousins and my best friends and all this and i mentioned their names and i'm like can you give them this love and then he said well, that's what you're there for i said me i how am i supposed to give them all this love like this love is too much I can't, I can't possibly give them all this love. And he said, you can ask me for help and ask me to help be an outlet for this love. And I was like, oh, that's very different to how I was doing things on earth where I was trying to do everything myself with my ego to produce goodness. Instead, I just have to ask God and just sort of move aside, be an outlet for his love to pass through. Okay. I was like, all right, I will, but things are very different on earth. Like, it seems so easy from up here, but on earth, it's so difficult. Like, I feel like as soon as I get back there and I go back to being a human, I'm going to get caught up in my old ways again, my old habits, and I'm going to, I don't want to lose touch with you again. And then he said, I am you. Now I was like, what? How can you say you are me? You, you're too powerful to be me. I don't understand. And then he stopped and everything stood still for a moment. And out of the center of my forehead shot out this giant golden eye this gigantic golden eye and it was beautiful and it's come out of my forehead but now it's looking back at me and i was confused this giant eye is this me looking at me or is this god looking at me and god said i am viewing your life through you as you you and i are one and then he sent me back. That was my near-death experience. Jacob, thank you for sharing it. Can you confidently say that this NDE was completely different from a drug experience? 
I can't speak for everybody else out there, but I'd used this combination of drugs plenty of times before. And I'll be honest, uh, I had tried a couple of times after that to try to induce that experience again because I was so desperate to go back there. And it's just, it was its own thing. Um, a lot of people say, oh, he just smoked this or he tried that and the drugs were doing their job. It's like, no, drugs don't do this. And if they did, a lot more people would be having this experience because there's no shortage of drug addicts out there. So when you were in the void and you felt refreshed and restored, did you also felt like you were healed? I felt, I didn't feel healed because I still felt all the trauma within me, but I didn't need the healing because the love itself was all I needed. I didn't feel healed until my ego layers had dissolved when I was flying through and everything was coming off of me. But in that moment, the healing didn't matter. The love was all I needed. That energy of God was had me complete. I didn't need another thing, which in itself is kind of healing, but not quite in the way we understand it as humans. What I found fascinating was that at certain times, like when you were flying up the tower, you felt like you were going to die, but you were already dead. Or, yeah, or, or did you not realize that you were already dead? I didn't realize I was dead um, at all, but it was a death of the ego because there's something about our identification with being a human, or at least for me, this was my experience. I still, because I didn't know I was dead. It's like when you're in a dream, when you're in a dream, you're still walking around in a body and you're scared when things are going to happen. You feel like you're going to die in the dream, even though you can't. It was very similar to that. Um, but the death of the ego does feel like death. Um, but it, it's brilliant when you actually go through it. Like, it's, it's pretty awesome. Did you ever happen to ask God, why do we come to the earth in the first place? I didn't, but I remember there was a, a moment there when I first realized I was with God and I felt like, yes, like I'm finally back with you again. And I remember feeling like everything I've been through is worth it because I get to experience this. Um, when I was there, everything made sense. And I remember when, when the image appeared of my human body and he said, you have to go back. I remember thinking one of the things I thought was that guy is not going to get it. When I go back into his body, He's not going to understand this place, even if he remembers it. He won't be able to understand anything. It seems pretty clear to me that we're not supposed to understand exactly why we're here while we're here. If we did, then it wouldn't be the same experience. Since you've been back, do you feel like all this past trauma has now been resolved? Yes and no. Um, I, I I was hoping that that would happen. When I got back, I was trying to process what I had experienced. I, I Some of it had gone away, but a lot of it was still there to be worked out. But it's NDE is a no quick pill for, for recovery, at least in my experience. What it did show me was to stop trying to fix the ego and instead return to who I really was underneath it all. To return to my soul, my soul, which is like a, a piece of God, an aspect of God. And when I return to that, the ego layers within me and no longer have a firm grasp on me. And all the trauma and everything just starts to die off. It starts to sort of, um, what's the word? Uh, you know, when your muscles, when your muscles like, atrophy, yeah. atrophy is the word I was looking for. Um, and the, the, the parts where I was stuck, people were coming into my life because I was on the path of healing. Um, you know, a hypnotherapist came into my life and helped me to resolve a lot of my childhood trauma. Um, my best mate would come and talk to me when I was feeling down and sort of help me see things from an outside perspective and all these things that seem like just regular everyday things looking back i realized no these are this is like god's unseen hand in my life 
helping me to go along the healing journey because I had decided to go on the healing journey rather than just numbing the pain and running away from the pain, which is what I was always doing before. Do you feel that this trauma that you experience is the reason that you came here or it was just something that happened to you while you were here? I think it was a reason I came here. I was traumatized literally from birth. Like I had a very traumatic birth and I had a very violent father and I had a very unstable mother. And there's no way that that was an accident. But I feel like a lot of what I experienced is kind of like transforming lead into gold. Without the lead there in the first place, I would have no gold afterwards. Um, the trauma and the damage I experienced created something for me to transform. And that transformation has been amazing. Um, and you see this with a lot of people, you know, um, like the greatest, a lot of the greatest athletes and the greatest fighters and the greatest artists, a lot of them have a lot of pain within them. And because they're channeling that pain into something, it turns into something beautiful, mm -hmm. something that benefits the rest of humanity. Since you've been back, how else have you changed? Well, an obvious one is sobriety. Um, I found it impossible to get sober before, but now that I, it wasn't the NDE that did it because for a whole year after that experience, I went back into the drugs and alcohol and I was trying to numb the pain and numb the, the anguish of not being in that place anymore. I say things got even worse for me. Um, but when I started to learn how to connect with my soul, the divinity within those things just started to fall away one by one. And so sobriety is one. Um, another one is I don't get angry that much anymore. I still do. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, like if I read like nasty comments on YouTube or whatever, I sort of smile. I, I don't take it personally anymore. Um, the e my ego used to be very insecure and always, you know, wanted to be the big guy, the top guy, all that. Um, and it was never, never satisfied no matter what it got. But now it's the opposite. Now I'm satisfied no matter what I get. It's, there's a place within me that has cured my, my desires, I guess you could say. Um, another one is, I've come to understand religion a lot better. Um, I was, I was raised in a, in a Christian, Christian household, uh, which was, I mean, Christian by name, not so much by, by behavior. Um, and I, as I got older, I started to think that that religion was kind of crazy. And I thought all religions were kind of crazy, but since then I really, uh, understand it from sort of an original point of view of people who were in tune with God. They were mystics. They were experiencing God directly and trying to teach that to others. But then as time goes on, people have turned that into uh, a tradition. And when it's turned into a tradition or in a culture, it's not quite the same. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, I have to teach people about how to reconnect with God um, the same way I had to learn how because my sanity depended on it. Um, and the other thing is I don't, yeah, as I, as I said, the desire nature was cured. I don't seem to always need to have a woman in my life or a drug in my life. I don't waste time playing video games anymore and things like this that, you know, I was always trying to escape reality before. And now I'm, I'm cool being here again. I'm good with that because I know I'm here for a purpose and everything I need is within me. And that's been a beautiful thing to find again. Do you feel like you've returned with a message to share with humanity? Apart from the NDE itself, I feel strongly like I want to help religious people find God again. Um, not just religious people, but sick people in general. But I feel like a lot of uh, religious people are craving God, but they feel like, oh, I'm in the religion, so I'm in the right place. But it's like they haven't actually got that authentic connection within yet. Um, so it's not one message. I'd, 
people. I mean, if I was to say one message, I'd say God is within. But saying that is easy. Experiencing that is another thing. Um, and there are a lot of sick people out there as well who are not necessarily religious, but they're very traumatized like I was. And they're depending on external substances to try to numb the pain, just like I did. And I found my way out of that. And I want to help others with that as well. So I don't have any plans per se, but I've given up my life to to this higher power, to God. And I just want God to do what he sees fit with me. And I, I feel guidance along the way. Um, a lot of time, you know, I'm going to turn right and he tells me to turn left. And then I find someone there who starts talking to me and we have a one hour conversation and the guy's life has changed, you know. A lot of that sort of stuff is happening with me these days. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily that I've returned with a message, but I've, re I've returned with a mission. Um, and that mission unfolds day by day, moment by moment. Have you noticed since you've been back that you have any new abilities that you didn't have prior? Definitely the psychic medium type of stuff. I did have a little bit of it before, but it's like grown a lot um since then and uh it's not like it's not there 24 7 it's not like they give me the the numbers for the lottery it's not like i can just you know ask a question and get the answer straight away but a lot of the time i'm just doing my thing and a voice drops into my head and i know it's not my voice and things happen perfectly as the voice says it will um or i i follow the instruction of this voice and things unfold. Um, the greatest ability I'd say I have is that I'm no longer chasing my desire nature anymore. I'm not like, you know, a dog chasing its tail or like a donkey walking after the carrot that you dangle in front of him. That's the greatest ability is that I found myself within. Was the voice you heard the same voice every time? Uh, do you mean the voice I hear like in my, right. yeah, uh, no. No, it can come from different places. Sometimes it's from somebody who's passed away. Um, you know, there's, uh, I remember one time I was spending, I was, I was talking to this girl, um, she is from Serbia and I kept hearing this name drop into my head as I was talking to her. And this name that kept dropping was an old lady. She kept saying, Olga, Olga. And I kept trying to like, what is this name that keeps popping up in my head? And I kept saying, Olga. Olga and I was just like all right all right and I talked to this girl and I said hey you know anyone by the name of Olga and she's like oh yeah my grandma's name is Olga I said is she alive or is she dead she said she's dead I was like oh man <laughs> like and, you know things like this happen a lot um but yeah different people for sure how did she react when you told her that you know she keeps telling you her name well she kind of smiled because she could she she was very skeptical but she was like oh one of these weird things is happening right now and i can't i can't deny it's happening <laughs> um but i was i was freaked out you know i won't, I won't lie it was i'm still getting used to it um it's different when it's like my my grandparents and stuff who even though i didn't know them while they were alive um you know my grandparents it's my thing but when it's with somebody else yeah, it freaked me out. And then she was like, is there anything else after Olga? And then I was listening and I didn't hear anything, but I don't understand why that happens, to be honest. Like, you know, you'd think that if you interrupted me to tell me your name and to speak to your granddaughter, you'd have something to say. But I just felt this strong energy, like I'm here. And I just told her, I was like, hey, well, she's here and she's with you. So I guess that's all it is, you know. Um, and that's happened a few times with a few different people. Um, so yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty interesting, but I can't say I understand it. I'd say that the logic on the other side is very different to the human logic we have here. How long ago was your experience and do you feel like you're still processing it? Yeah, definitely. It was very recent. I only had my experience in uh, October 21. So, um, you know, and I, I fell into, you know, a pit of despair and was trying to use drugs and alcohol to escape the pain again. And that lasted until about October last year. So what's that like four months ago, five months ago? Um, I'm still fresh out of this. I'm still a baby on this new path. Um, yeah, I'm still, in terms of processing it, it's like, I'm not really 
thinking about the experience all the time anymore because the experience was in the past and I find my peace in the present moment. So, but hey, look, for for about a year or so, it's all I could think about. Um, and I actually, to be honest, I really tried to convince myself that it wasn't real because it had destabilized my life so much. And I would try to tell myself, it was just the drugs, it was just the drugs, but I couldn't, like, I couldn't fool myself into thinking that. And I realized at some point that that pit of despair that I was in, that deep depression and stuff, like that was me dissolving the ego layers. And my biggest ego to deal with was the ego of depression. And listening to that, that voice of the ego, which was putting me down and saying to me all the things that my dad used to say to me and you know, me believing those voices and that. And I remember um, my best mate, he called me up and he was just talking to me and he's like, what's going on with you, man? You barely, leave, you barely leave the house these days. You're a mess. You're not eating anymore. Like, what's going on? And I didn't tell him about the NDE, but I was just telling him about, you know, the depression I was going through and the things that I believed about myself. And at some point he couldn't contain himself and he started laughing. and Part of me was like, oh, how dare he laugh at me? But he was like, man, I can't believe you think these things about yourself. What, you believe you're a loser. You believe you're ne never going anywhere in life, that you're never going to get better. Like, how do you actually believe that? It's so, that's so silly, man. And after that, I was like, hmm, like, is what I'm saying so ridiculous that he can't even contain his laughter? And I remember driving and those thoughts were coming up in my head again. And I remembered him laughing at me. And then I thought, this ego of depression says a lot of garbage to me and I'm actually believing it. And, you know, that was my way to identify the ego of depression and to put that away. And yeah, I can say that I haven't felt any depression for, for about four or five months now, um, which is a first for me. It's um, great. And to be sober. Yeah. So it's been great. Yeah. I think in order to exist here, we have to have some amount of ego. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, that's the, that's the truth for, for everyone, really. Um, you know, we, you have to develop an ego. You want it to be a, a healthy ego. But the problem comes when the ego sort of captures the consciousness and the consciousness feels like, you know, a bird in a cage and the bird wants to fly free and the ego is holding it down. It's got a death grip on it. And this is when people are trying to numb the pain of being in the cage with whatever addiction. Most people have got an addiction of some sort, whether it's addiction to a partner, to drugs, to movies, whatever. Everyone, almost everyone's got a coping mechanism for being locked inside that cage. But when you can identify the ego and let the bird free, you no longer need the coping mechanisms that you needed inside that cage. But most people are terrified to leave that cage because it feels dangerous. It fits the fear of the unknown. Um, and it feels like death. Like, I mean, imagine that, you know, if you, you got a bird in a cage all its life and you let it free, the first thing it's going to think about is, oh, well, what about the predators? What about the cats and the, and the bigger birds who are going to get me and stuff? You know, it can be scary. But it's very freeing because we were made to fly, you know, to be free. And um, I think that's a big thing with the religious people, like I was saying before, that they want to have an experience with God, but they're trapped inside the cage. When you get outside that cage, you can experience God directly. Um, and people who are, who are addicts and unsatisfied with their life, well, they're unsatisfied because they're in the cage and they got to get out of that cage and then they can fly free and it's, exhilarating it's beautiful what do you think is the best way to leave the cage there are a lot of ways you see every every cage has got its own unique lock um but generally speaking there are some things that apply to everyone and one is to be in the present moment here and now um the other thing is look meditation works for just about almost everyone but you don't necessarily have to meditate um Loving acts of kindness towards others is really big. Um, anything you can do to remove the boundaries, um, to stop seeing yourself as, you know, your human identity, you know, 
oh, I am Jacob King, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. No, nah, I'm none of that. I'm the light of my soul. And connect with that divinity within you. And one thing that everyone does where they're going in the wrong direction, from my perspective, is that they're always trying to add things on top of their ego rather than remove the layers that is blocking them from the awareness of their true identity within. Um, and everyone, hey, the ego is selfish. Everyone wants to add on top, make themselves bigger and better instead of removing the garbage within and all those layers. And then you'll get to the that diamond within. And it's it's awesome. When you find that, you don't need anything anymore. Like, it's good. You're well fed after that. What about this? How does someone identify their cage? Well, there are layers to it. So whatever layer is on top is the thing that's pressing you the most and that's keeping you down. So for me, it was my depression. Um, for a lot of people, like let's say you're a CEO of a company, then that is probably going to be your cage. And the hard part is that most people are not willing to leave their cage. They want all the freedom and the good stuff of being out of their cage without ever having to leave the cage. And that's where it becomes pretty much impossible. For me, it was easy, I guess, because hey, my cage was too small for me anyway. And it was, it was not, a, it was not fun being in there. So it was easy for me to leave. But for a lot of people, it's just whatever it, that layer is on top, they know what it is. They know what it is. Um, and as they dissolve that top layer, then there's another one and another one and another one. And as you keep dissolving each layer, there's more freedom and there's more goodness and you feel more healthy mentally and spiritually. Has the memory of this experience faded? Um, not really. Um, I'd say it's no longer an intrusive memory uh, because for the first year, it was all I could think about as I was processing it. Now I don't really think about it every day. From time to time I do, um, but I don't need to because I have experienced, oh, well, I've found the energy of God within myself. And so I don't need to daydream about it anymore. I can just relax and tune inside and I can feel God's energy there. And that's all I need. Um, I can recall the, the memory very easily when I do an interview or I speak to somebody about it and I can live it and I can feel it all again. And it doesn't seem to have faded and I still get feel the energy of God. When I talk about this experience, I get the goosebumps and the shivers and it's just like, oh, it's nice. <laughs> So no, it hasn't faded. What do you do for your professional life? And has this changed that? Yeah, so uh, before I was mostly, uh, I used to do a little bit of acting when I was younger. Um, and I was doing just customer service jobs on the side. Um, I enjoyed acting. And after that, I started doing like security work and truck driving and some bartending as well. And I used to sort of cycle through all three. I'd go through phases where... Or I'd be a truck driver for a few months and then I got sick of that, but I'd switch it up. Um, since my experience, when I had my experience, I was working as a bartender. I kept that job for about six months or so. And then I started to just feel completely like, I don't like the energy of being in a bar and facilitating that, that sort of energy towards others. Um, so I haven't been able to do that. I really enjoyed the work physically. I enjoyed making drinks and engaging with people. That was fun. Um, and then, yeah, I started, I've started doing a lot more driving recently, um, driving by myself and just putting some soft, easy music on and just, it's become like a meditation for me to just drive and, you know, not only that, but to be good with people on the road, um, always let people in front of me and to practice being calm when somebody cuts me off or when somebody r road rages me to not engage with that. It's all become like part of my meditation. Um, so yeah, it's mostly driving now. Um, still do a little bit of security work here and there for my friend of mine. Um, so yeah. Do you feel like when you were on the other side, it was more real than being here with me now? Oh yeah. It's even when I got back, I realized how fake this earth is. It's such an illusion, but you don't know it's an illusion because you're in it. Um, but when you're over there, it's it's hyper real. Um, it's the same as when you're in a dream, you think the dream is real. And then you wake up from the dream and you look back and you go, 
Now, how did I think that was a dr- that that dream was real? Like that was crazy. It should have been obvious to me that I was in a dream. The same thing with Earth. There's another layer to this that we're in the dream here and we don't really realize it. Um, even when somebody tells you, "Hey, Jeff, you're in a dream right now," like you don't realize, you don't feel like you're in a dream. It's just like whatever. It's just words. But I think that um, this is a little bit like what uh, enlightenment is all about when you connect with your soul and and everything and i'm not there all the time I, i'm there for a few moments here and there and then i lose it but you realize that everything is kind of uh connected to your inner vibration and that's kind of the thing that dictates what you experience here on earth but most people are not connected to that inner vibration they're lost inside their heads and that's why everything feels kind of weird or it feels reality doesn't really make sense here but when you when i started to connect with my inner vibration connect with my soul that vibration i i feel like that's the divine vibration of god that comes from god that guides me in this life and when i started to pay attention to that and listen to that i started to enter into a flow state and when i enter into the flow state i feel when i've done the wrong thing immediately even if i'm not consciously aware of it in my actions i feel what affects my vibration negatively and so the most important thing for me is keep that protected and keep that clean so now when somebody say let's say i'm driving the truck and somebody gives me the finger all right in the past i would have gone at him all right let's we're gonna have a road rage now but now it's just like oh like it's all good like you take the space no worries why not because i'm a good guy but because that vibration is everything to me that's where i'm living from now so yeah, and then, but then everybody else starts looking a little bit crazy, Jeff. You know, because they don't realize that they're not operating under the same parameters that I am, and so they're just reacting to everything with their thoughts, and it's delusional. But if everybody was connected to that vibration, we'd have peace on earth in one day. You know, you learned on the other side that you are God, or at least a part of you is God. When you remind yourself here, how does that change you in any way? I'm still, that's the last one that I'm struggling to integrate because it's, it's very, it's very difficult for me to say, I am God. I I don't feel comfortable saying that to me. It's like a drop of water from the ocean saying it is the ocean. It's like, yeah, it is, but not quite it's a bit more appropriate if the ocean says to the drop of water i am you to remind the drop yeah okay but for me it's just like god is with me i feel more comfortable saying that god told me one thing i'm still struggling to integrate it um i i feel like god is with me and god is experiencing what i'm experiencing directly but there's still that slight separation because I still have, you know, my egos. I'm still dissolving all this. I'm still a baby on this spiritual path. I'm still a complete baby. But it makes me trust whatever's happening to me, that it's all part of a process. I'm not the script writer of my own life. And I'm experiencing this for a reason. And it gives me faith in whatever I'm going through um, because it's not, it's not been sunshine and rainbows for me since returning, even when I got sober and all that, like, there's still a million things I'm experiencing that could easily make me collapse. But because I have that perspective of everything I'm experiencing is divine, is orchestrated by God to experience this feeling of limitation for whatever reason it is, I don't need to know the reason anymore. It just makes me have a sort of peace, a calm, a grace about me as I experience the problems of life every day. And what more could I ask for, really? I, I don't need to know intellectually. I don't, I'm, not, I'm never going to walk around going, hey, I am God. Like, because everybody is, you know? And that's the most important thing that helped me accept it was knowing that whatever God said to me applies to everybody. And if I look to other people, and remind myself that is God, God is within them. I treat them very, very differently. Um, And I recommend everybody to try it, that 
God is within every single person you interact with and treat them as such. And watch how your life transforms. I like that. Do you find yourself being less ambitious in life and more just surrendering to whatever comes your way? Yes and no. Um, less ambitious for, for money. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't, I used to love cars and motorbikes and stuff and I still do, but you know, I don't care what I drive anymore. It doesn't phase me what, what car I drive. Um, these are all distractions. So I'm less ambitious for the things that distract me spiritually. Um, but in some ways you could say I'm more ambitious because I have so much more energy within me because my energy is no longer leaking out towards futile things anymore. So I like, Today, uh, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and I went to the gym. To most people, that's pretty ambitious. To me, I'm just, I'm within the vibration. My, my vibration is not um, something that wants me to go and sit on a mountaintop and just experience bliss by myself. It's something that is here in society to try to be a part of society and to try to help others around me to make this all a better place. Not that I'm thinking that intellectually. It's just I'm observing that this is what's happening. Um, so yeah, it's. I'd say I'm more ambitious with the things that matter and less ambitious with things that don't matter. Have you told many of your friends and family about your experience? And if so, how have they reacted? It's told a few people here and there. There's, I, I've kept it secret from more people than I've told, that's for sure. Um, I told two people pretty early on, my two best mates at the time. One of them kept quiet. The other one was just like, bro, you just took drugs and you had a drug trip. And so I was like, that that was, it was too early on in my experience for me to hear that. So I kept it quiet for a long time. Um, and then I didn't tell anyone for almost a year. Um, and the first person I told was uh, one of your former guests, Nell Archer, who is a good friend of mine now. Um, and I didn't even want to tell her, but I couldn't keep it within anymore. And I told her, and I was like, look, this happened to me. I experienced this, and, but I, I don't understand how I became so messed up afterwards. And she spoke to me and she guided me through it. And she said, Hey, like when I had my NDE, I was at home for eight months and I could barely eat. And I was a mess as well. It's, it's a difficult thing to recover from, you know? And she really helped me to see like, no, nah, it's all good. Like, I don't have to be down on myself for how I've reacted to this. Um, but yeah, I, most people in my life have no idea about it because a lot of people can't accept it. Even if it was a, a regular sort of, you know, NDE where, you know, let's say I got hit by a car or whatever. Um, I know most people still are not going to accept it. They're going to say, oh, it's the dying brain. It's just, people have got their excuses for everything. If they don't want to accept it, they're not going to accept it. And I'm not concerned with that anymore because I had my experience and it freed me. And there is no comment in the world that somebody can make against me that's going to take away my freedom. Do you find that your social circles have changed? Yeah. Yeah, they've gotten a bit smaller um, in some regards. I talk to more people online these days, like NDE groups and stuff, and sometimes people reach out. Um, I I still have some of the, old, the same old friends that I had before. Um, but it gets a little awkward because they're very different to me now. Um, I've changed quite a bit. I was pretty much only, I'd say it's probably like really two friends I've got that were close with me before and have stayed close with me since. Almost everybody else has been a, too much of a vibrational shift for me to keep them in my life. Um, not that I've cut them out, but it's just things get a little bit awkward, um, which I don't mind. And there's more people, new people coming in and that. Um, and I'm still very new in this, as I said, so things are still unfolding. You mentioned that you talk to a lot of people online. So are you up for more people contacting you? I don't mind. Yeah, I'll, I can't promise that I'll get to everybody immediately. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. So if anybody wants to email me, they can email me at jacobking479 at gmail.com. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, uh, just my first name, last name, Jacob King. And the handle is Jacob King 369 on YouTube. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of videos on there right now, but there's definitely something that's going to be coming because I have so much 
so many downloads are coming to me. I'm starting to understand things in such different ways than I did before. And I'd really like to share that with other people. Um, so I will be uploading a lot more things to my YouTube channel soon. But if anybody wants to join that. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Sure. Trust the process. God is within us all. And tune into that inner vibration, that vibration that keeps you alive. Get out of your heads, into your hearts. Connect within and watch your life change. It's amazing. Jacob, thank you for that message. And thank you again for being my guest. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.